Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about the Curse of Strahd. That's right, this is a Curse of Strahd Dungeon Master Guide. So if you are a player, this is not the video for you. You need to go and watch one of my other videos, but not this video. This is going to be full of spoilers. I'm going to be talking about uh, the two children, Rose and Thorn, from the Death House or Durst Manor. This is really what I'm covering today. Now I have many videos on the Curse of Strahd if you are interested, but that's not the topic for today. We're going to talk about Rose and Thorn. Now Rose and Thorn are two NPCs the Dungeon Master will play in two forms. Uh, the first form is the illusion of Rose and Thorn, and the second version is the spirits of Rose and Thorn. They aren't alive anymore, they are simply dead. Uh, do not show the players any of the pictures of Rose and Thorn. Uh, those pictures look quite evil, and they will immediately feel like they are being led into a trap, which is in fact they are. So be careful about your descriptions of the children, because really if players are um, in the game and they're you know playing through the Curse of Strahd, likelihood is that they don't trust anybody or any, any no NPCs will be trusted. So it's it's really important to be able to sell Rose and Thorn, otherwise you really can't get very far in this adventure, unfortunately. It's just one of those things. Okay, now Rose and Thorn Durst are trapped in the Durst Manor as spirits. Their spirits are actually trapped. The Durst Manor or Death House uses their forms because they the, the Death House itself or Durst Manor has uh, watched these two children and their spirits sort of uh, move around and operate and so it, uh, it disguises itself or disguises um, these two forms as the children and this is to lure people into the house seemingly to rescue um, baby Walter from a monster that's inside supposedly in the basement. That is actually not the case. What the Durst Manor is trying to do is lure them in there and then kill them and they will be added to the concophony of individuals who are trapped within the house. Uh, it's, I've already done uh, a video on Death House so you're welcome to go and check that one out as well. Okay, so what's the deal with the, the children Rose and Thorn? So Rose is Rosa Valda. She's a girl. She's about 10 years old. Thorn is Thorn, Thornbolt. Uh, a boy of seven years. Their first appearance is the illusion that the house creates and they will be standing outside. And you'll find that Thorn is weeping and clutching a stuffed doll which looks quite macabre and horrible. Uh, certainly play them as children. Rose is trying to hush Thorn and does most of the talking if the player's characters ask any questions. Now it's a good chance that one of the players will try to have their character comfort the children. Do not let the um, characters touch the children. They need to draw back away from them as if afraid of them. Um, they will answer questions but you cannot touch them. Now this would break the, the concept of them being illusion, right? As soon as you touch an illusion then there's an opportunity to start making some sort of perception or insight check and you don't want that to happen. So don't let the, uh, the characters touch the children in any way. Now Rose will do most of the um, answering of questions. It is important, as I said, to sell the children to the players, otherwise they will not go into the house. For good reason, um, ultimately, but you don't want that to happen. Okay, so what sort of things do the children actually know? Uh, these illusions of children, because remember we're dealing with the illusions of these children. Well, the first thing is they know that uh, there's a monster in the house. They don't know what it looks like, they've never seen it, they've only heard it, they know it's in the basement. Um, they can say that their, their parents um, Gostov and Elizabeth Durst uh, kept the monster trapped in the basement. Um, it's not like the, the parents had a monster and decided to, to, to have it sort of in the basement, but the, the monster appeared and they've trapped it in the basement. It's all lies, none of this is ever true. Um, they don't know what happened to, to their parents, so they just assume that the monster might have killed their parents, but they're not too sure what's happened to their parents. Remember, these illusions only know and only present the information that the um, Durst Manor or Death House want the players to actually know, or their characters, that is. 
Baby Walter is on the third floor in the nursery. And this is all lies. You know, this is not true. It's half-truths or lies in some way. The, the children actually died of starvation centuries ago. Uh, their insane parents who were operating a cult uh, had been luring individuals into the house, uh, killing them. The, the howls and screams and so forth that the children used to hear were supposedly explained by the parents as being a monster, but that was really what uh, their parents were doing to other people. Um, they keep the... <clears throat> They kept uh, the uh, the children locked in the attic when things started to get a bit out of, out of hand and uh, essentially forgot about their, their children. Um, now, remember too that the, the parents were killed by Strad von Zarevich. So it's entirely possible that they got locked in there when Strad showed up and uh, when a battle engaged in some, kind, um, some way, maybe this was their attempt, if you like, uh, to protect the children from Strad. Um, I think it's much more likely that they were locked in there to keep them away from all of the uh, things the, the parents were engaged in. You will find most of the information you require on Rose and Thorn on page 211, 212, 215 and 216 uh, of the Curse of Strad if you are interested. Remember, their parents have been feeding them lies for quite a long time, so they don't really know very much when they actually meet uh, um, Rose and Thorn for the very first time. So Rose and Thorn, their skeletons and their ghosts are in the children's room, which is area 20. And uh, if the, now they, the skeletons will be sort of just laying there as if they had sort of uh, been lying back and eventually perished. Um, this is what has happened. They had starved to death. Now, that, why did they never leave the room? One, it was locked. There's actually a secret door uh, that allows them access to the basement, but they were too afraid to go down there because of the monster. And so forth. Um, f so they just waited until eventually, um, you know, passed out and, uh, and faded away. Now, if any of the player's characters disturb the children's toys... This will cause the, the, the kids' ghosts to appear and they will ask the players' characters lots of questions. They, will be, they won't be happy with anybody touching their toys, so you should so certainly sort of present that. But think in terms of, I'm dealing with a child, how can I have them ask lots and lots of questions? That's what ch um, children tend to do uh, because that's what they would do. They won't be able to answer all of the uh, player's character's questions, unfortunately. Remember, it is important to role play these children as bored, scared, and neglected children who still fear the monster even though they are dead themselves. They do know that they have passed away. They, they know that they starved, um, starved, but that's not the, the, the biggest issue for them. They are actually trapped within this um, location. Now, Rose can reveal the secret door to the basement by indicating it through the dollhouse. Um, the children can't actually leave the room without help. They need to actually possess somebody else or some other body to leave the room. Their, their spirits won't able to um, be able to actually exist outside the room without assistance. Try to focus on the children's flaws. Remember, they are fearful of abandonment, so if anybody tries to leave the room and leave them, because they won't, they can't follow anybody, um, then what's going to happen is they're going to try to possess one of the individuals within the party. Now, if Rose uh, tries to possess any of the individuals, um, her demeanour and the way that she acts is quite bossy and angry. Now, this is sort of... Uh, part of her, her, her flaw. So remember, those are the things you want to really focus on. Um, Thorn is very simple. If uh, Thorn tries to possess anybody, it's going to be coming down to just act as if uh, Thorn is scared of everything all the time and constantly crying and weeping and generally, um, you know, a scared little boy. That's essentially what you're looking for. Really basic stuff. It's actually very difficult to play these characters and have them seem... Um, legit because the first time the players characters meet them or the first time the players meet these characters it's an illusion so they are confused they'll probably ask questions about how oh, I thought you I saw you outside and they the children will have no idea what any of the players are talking about they, they will you know they'll be able to say look I, I don't know I wasn't outside um, so they won't know 
who they're talking about. So the players that immediately at that point are going to be really suspicious of anything you do. There's a good chance that the players will want to take the bodies, the skeletal, skeletal remains of the children out of the house and bury them somewhere so that they can rest in peace, which I would certainly allow um, any of the players to do if they can find the body of Walter, the baby, and um, they take um, Rosenthorn's um, remains out of the house, which is easier said than done, um, then certainly have them uh, at rest. Leaving their skeletal remains there will mean that they will their ghosts in, are still trapped within the house. Um, trying to destroy these individuals is impossible. They reform. So if you if they engage in a battle and uh, the the kids aren't really there to be a, a combat monster, they're more there as a role play. So if they do engage in a battle and uh, they're more likely to wind up just reforming after a period of time. Follow the same uh, guidelines that the Monster Manual has for all ghosts. Same sort of principle. Okay, so hopefully you found this useful. I, like I said, I have um, quite a few videos on the Curse of Strahd that should help you out. Uh, I have uh, videos for Dungeon Masters and players that cover all sorts of different aspects of Dungeons & Dragons 5e and just roleplay games in general. If you want to support the channel so I keep doing videos like this, then I have a Patreon page where you can get access to the, the live stream content that goes unlisted. Uh, I give priority to patrons and I do a, a couple of special things for them as well. I also have affiliate links to the book depository on Amazon. Uh, I have a merchandise shelf as well. And uh, that's it. Make sure to share, like and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live. And I go live quite a lot. And when I publish new videos. And that happens quite a lot as well. And hey, till next time. Keep rolling those 20s.